Hey everybody, welcome to Form by Scripture. We're looking at season two. I'm not sure which episode number this is, but we are talking to people about their experience of practicing scripture, or just highlighting amazing people at our church. I'm really excited because we have Lexi, our worship leader here, and uh, this is the first time on the podcast. Yes. Welcome. Yeah, thank you. And so a few objectives we have today is one, I want people to hear your story. Everybody sees you on Sunday. Um, but you know, you don't have the chance to tell your story every time. It, do you find that hard where like you can, you just sing, you can't talk much. Yeah. I, that, yeah. Is that a struggle? <laughs> that's a struggle. Okay. That's amazing. <laughs> that's a struggle. Yeah, yeah. I, I have some friends where they have worship leaders where they just talk all the time and it's the joke of like, he, he says, I know I had a bad sermon. If my worship leader just talks a lot Stop after it. just like fixing it all up, you yeah. know, like, well, let's do a different altar call here. I but I wondered, to do that. no, so thank you. No, I get that. But quiet. even just talk, right. It's yeah. like, you want to get to know people right. and yeah. I never have the impulse to sing. So okay. I can't match I on that, you, but, but okay. <laughs> oh, I'm front row. You yeah. hear me every week. Yeah. I don't have the impulse on a microphone. I know That's it's good. better than the theater days. <laughs> The theater days, I was like right here to like, here. So first of all, to get to know you, yeah. and then also how the you know this practice of scripture reading has been helpful for you. I know you talked about it with Pastor Caleb. You did an interview on yeah. on a Sunday, and I thought it was really helpful. And I'm like, let's get a longer version of that on podcast. So sure. first of all, who is Lexi? Well, there's a lot of things to say about that. <laughs> Tell me about your story. Maybe even <laughs> no, like yeah. when you started coming around our yeah. world, all that, whatever, sure. however you want to start. Yeah. So um, I really didn't grow up with any sort of religion at all. And still to this day, my family um, on both sides, my mom and my dad's side, they don't practice any sort of religion. And so growing up, I didn't have any that, any of that influence. Mm -hmm. um, but really in, I would say like 2015, 2016 is when I first started coming around the church and that was actually heart cry church yeah with pastor billy when i was an and, associate pastor at that time yeah i was there yeah uh -huh. and so that was like my first exposure to the church and it honestly took a long time for me to kind of and i was young too so it was yeah kind of really getting used to you're still young life, but... yeah <laughs> <laughs> I was young, young. and just getting used to that lifestyle and yeah. what it meant to be a christian and to follow the word and um just all the things that come with that and, but really in like 2017, that's when it was in worship, which is ironic. It was in worship and I just started crying. I was mm. like, this is just, it was like something clicked and I was in the back, I was crying and I was like, I, I need to be baptized. Like, wow. this is it. And so that night I actually was baptized at the cowboy church. Right. Um, and from then it was like, it was really like a fire that started in me. And then I started coming to passion creek but it wasn't very consistent you know i was still, yeah like still figuring things out i was like just out of school and all these things um and i remember so specifically i was having a like a desire to go to thailand and i was like man i really want to like make the trip to go to thailand yeah like, get some friends together i just love to do that and i'm on my phone i'm scrolling on instagram and i see passion creek and you're like we're going to thailand and I was with friends and I stood up and I was like, I'm going to Thailand. Nice. And that was when I was like, okay, like I'm like, I'm doing it. And I wanted, it was like a thing with Thailand and then just like getting involved deeper with Passion Creek and like yeah. getting to know all of you guys. And that was really my first experience, not only like out of the country, but just meeting you guys really. And like, yeah, like de starting to develop. That's when that we became friends. Yeah, yeah. That's like. Um, I remember like Shay and I got really close over mm -hmm. that trip and it was just like such a thing where I came back and like, man, I can't wait for the next one. Like, I can't wait to keep learning about these people. And um, I remember how excited you were. <laughs> like I got a fa Facebook message. You're like, Hey, is there any open spots? I'm going. Uh -huh. And I'm like, Oh yeah. You know, like, that's great. Are you? I don't yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, I think I totally knew you, but yeah, it was like out of nowhere. Uh -huh. It's like, I was begging people to come. Mm -hmm. You know, because it's hard because it's a time commitment. It's a lot of money, okay. which really, I mean, Thailand's not that expensive. But yeah, yeah I remember like, we're going to make this work. Uh -huh. And I remember thinking, well, I think she got baptized. Like we were trying to figure out like your spiritual maturity right. where yeah. you were. Uh -huh. So that we were trying to find like, do we have her teach or do we have her? Didn't you wind up doing dodgeball? I was in Weren't sports. you just pelting I was, kids? Yes, I was in sports. I was like, this is, this is my wheelhouse. Yeah, because <laughs> you've always done sports. Yeah, like you've done yeah, volleyball and everything. Yeah. yeah, no, that was so fun. I feel like I did a lot of the dodgeball too. I feel like yeah. I was a roamer that, that year. Yes. Uh -huh. I just kind of did whatever yeah, I wanted. Yeah, because you were doing a lot of filming. Yes. Filming a lot and like That was fun. Those were the days. Yeah. That was a lot of fun. I was actually talking to Jordan 
today at lunch and, and we actually know another missionary who lives in Thailand, like the northern part, which apparently is totally different uh -huh. from where we were. And I'm going to reach out and be like, hey, would you like a team to come? So uh -huh. how many trips have you gone with us? Gone to two. So I went to Thailand and Malaysia the year after. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. We've only been in Thailand once then. Yes. Got it. Yeah. Yes. I get confused. I don't know why. I, I get, get so confused about I it know, all. But I... So, okay. okay. Timeline. Sorry. Yes. I just want to talk about that trip a little. <laughs> that was an uh, awesome trip. Mm -hmm. So it was um, 2017. Really started to get like serious about the Lord. Mm -hmm. it, is that, that's, was that the year or was 18 the year for Thailand? 18 was the year for Thailand. Okay. And then 19 was Malaysia. 19 was but Malaysia. I even remember a specific conversation. We were on the bus and you had asked me because I think the challenge was to share your testimony. Mm -hmm. And you were like, we we're on our way to go do it. And you're like, um, so Trey, how do I do that? Yeah. <laughs> Where, you... I was like, I'm like six months in. <laughs> yeah. Like what are the elements? <laughs> yeah. what, what should I talk about? Yeah. yeah. That was so cool just to see you grow there. And then I feel like you've just been a part of our church family ever since. It's not yeah. like, I don't even know if you've missed a Sunday since, right? I mean, it it's was... just been all in after that. Yeah. After Thailand, I was seriously like, these are awesome people. Mm. Like just all of you guys are going, I was like, this is awesome people. I see the way that you guys live your lives, you know? And yeah. even from before that, cause I knew you somewhat, you know, sure. at heart cry and the years before but um that really i was like okay i'm i'm in i'm committed that's cool and then from there it was um that's where i expressed kind of my <laughs> how long I'm did like, it take I, <laughs> you, you weren't know. confident though no so I wasn't. you were like you know i do sing or like, like oh I like cool you know and it's <laughs> yeah. like american idol like everybody says they can sing but i don't think we were ever in the same row where i could hear you but yeah. finally we found a way which we're getting better at that even like right. last week we were talking about processes yes. to like if somebody's good at this let's plug them in right, right. away right. you finally start singing we're like what were we waiting so long <laughs> yeah. for this is amazing yeah, yeah so you've been that was in 2018 that same year right you eventually I maybe think, maybe by the end of the year or yeah, early 19 like you were singing yeah. okay and i remember specifically we um i had set up like an audition kind of with uh, Shay and Caleb and we ended up going back to Caleb's apartment <laughs> and nice. we were like sitting around Caleb's coffee table in his living room and we just started going and we were like hey you know and making albums still, and <laughs> yeah we were, we were writing music that <laughs> night no but I remember that Sunday I tried to get out of it I texted Shay I was like Shay oh wow I was like you know just you're nervous you know yeah and I was like you know I don't think I don't think I can do it tomorrow and she goes no, you're fine. <laughs> so nice. She didn't give me an excuse. And so I always, that's like, oh, that's amazing. That I'm like, thank you, Shay, for not giving me like an out. You know, you were wow. just like, no, you're good. And, yeah. Um, that's spiritual warfare. That happens yeah. so much. Like we were even talking about this this week with uh, Caleb about like when people get baptized, the temptation right after baptism is just not to come anymore. Like right. there really is an enemy mm -hmm. seeking. I mean, imagine like the stuff that's happened in your life because of leading worship has been so helpful. The enemy right. can see that, nah, you shouldn't do it. This is awkward or whatever. Right. Like it's so good that you push through it. And it's mm -hmm. great that Shay pushed you to push yeah. through it. That's awesome. Exactly. I didn't know that. Yeah. And so from there it was just, and then right after we went to Malaysia and mm -hmm. um, really ever since Thailand though, it was just very interesting for me to dive into the word more. And yeah. like, I mean, again, just growing up without having that influence and I was still living at home, you know? And so my parents were like, what are you, where are you going? I'm like going to church. They're like, oh, you know, it's just yeah. not, it just wasn't the norm in our family at all. Yeah. And so. And that's not a common story where the right. parents aren't, but the kid's like, no, I'm going, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And so, um, that was hard. I think that kind of held me back a little bit as far as my growth, yeah. like just like spiritual maturity and everything, just because I didn't really have, after going home, I'm like, I don't have anybody to talk to, sure. you know? And that took just me kind of being more intentional and getting plugged in. Yeah. Talking to you guys more, you know, cause you guys were really one of the only people that I was able to talk to about right. that kind wow. of stuff, right. you know? Um, but then yeah, after Malaysia really, um, and then you dealt with COVID with us together, yes. trying to COVID, that amazing services. stuff, virtual services for uh -huh. like 13 weeks. Yep. And then That's you, hard. yeah, it was hard. And the shifting to Sunday night was pretty hard, just uh -huh. different. Uh, we did that for a long time, yep. but we made it work. Mm -hmm. And then I remember telling you, I was like, man, I, well, first of all, uh, I thought we, I was leaving. So that was like a yeah. weird, uh -huh. <laughs> weird, hard thing yeah. for like five days. And, uh -huh. and then, <laughs> but, um, you know, I was so pumped that you were willing to, you know, yeah, like we're going to go to the school now. There's going to be a setup. You're like, all right, let's yeah. do it. You've always been so flexible. Right. Were you like that before coming to Christ? Are you just a flexible person? I think I'm just kind of a chill person. Nice. Yeah, I'm kind of 
it's if there's not anything you can do about it i just don't see <laughs> i'm like i don't stress about it you nice. know it's like you're you're either in it or you're not right you know so i'm like if i'm committed to being a part of passion creek and that yeah. means it doesn't matter where we're at what time we're meeting yeah. you know which we kept changing all yeah, those <laughs> like, if I wake up at six in the morning that's okay right you know it's just that's how it is and that's how my mentality that's is, great so. that's a rare mentality yeah that's a yeah we've really appreciated that about you a ton um I've also found, and we can get into the word stuff. Or yeah. There's other parts of the story you can share, you can. But I've also found uh, that there's never been a challenge that you haven't been willing to accept, like for leadership. Like, I, you know, we, you have been officially our worship leader since March of 21. Mm -hmm. And it was just one simple conversation. You're like, okay. I was like, oh, that was easier than I ever <laughs> thought it could be. <laughs> Whew, all right, yeah. good. We have somebody on Sunday and let's keep pushing forward. So we appreciate that about you. We you know, like sometimes like, Hey, pray between this transition. You know, that was towards, especially in the beginning, like you're still new to the faith and you're like, right. all right, I'll, I'll do it. We'll see what comes out. <laughs> we'll <see>. yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh -huh. Yeah. I think that's amazing. That's such yeah. a great quality to have in a leader. But, um, yeah. So in all of that, mm -hmm. what has been your relationship into the Bible? Because obviously at our church, we, we emphasize scripture. Um, but we, there's been some seasons where we really are like, Hey, here's how to do it, you know, yeah. do it yourself, but other seasons we're focusing on other things. So how has that been in your own journey? And just, because again, you don't have a background, mm -hmm. you know, it's not like you grew up, I was talking to another pastor in Tucson this week. And he said, he's like, Trey, I grew up doing Bible drills. Do you even know what that is? That's amazing. I would have no idea. What That's that. amazing. <laughs> Over half our church have no idea either. And we're yeah. going to keep it that way. Bible drills where you literally, the guy, you hold your Bible like this closed and they're like, all right. Matthew 10 33 and whoever gets there the fastest stands up and reads it and they win oh. and then like it's a scoring system your I boy was, won those a lot oh. I was all about <laughs> I was like okay. the nerd I'm like, yeah <laughs> now I can't do it because I do so much of it on my iPad you know like oh. it is a little bit harder and I keep changing Bibles so then it gets but anyways uh -huh. um so yeah again it's not like you had the disciplines growing up you had or any of those things so what's that process been like because i think a lot of people can relate to that mm -hmm. again the majority of our people at our church are more about more your story than mine mm -hmm. no church background my wife who's in the other room right there right yeah. she didn't grow up in church either mm -hmm. so what is that how i know because we talk a lot about trying versus training the training mentality is that hey the christian life's a marathon and if you've never ran before just get up off the couch tomorrow, right? right? It's not like all of a sudden you're gonna read your Bible for an hour every day. There's incremental change. So what's that incremental change been like for you? Yeah, absolutely. So um, not growing up with any sort of religion or, or anything like that, any influence. Um, I definitely, even today, every time I open my Bible, even if it's only reading for five or 10 minutes, I find myself learning things all the time. And I think that was hard for me at first because I didn't wanna seem like I didn't know a lot, you know, mm. I think that's a common fear. It's like, well, I don't want to even like getting plugged into a together group. It's like, well, I don't know that much. And I feel like I'm going to be put on the spot and I, you know, I don't want to seem like I don't know what I'm talking about, but it's so my story. It's, it's not like I'm going to wake up and know everything right off the bat. You know, it's, it's yeah. a continuous, you're learning continuously. And so, um, every day I still, when I'm opening a devotion, I'm, I just finished a devotional on Esther and it's like, wow, I don't think I've ever really dived into that, that book mm. that much, you know, and just reading through and being intentional with that time in the word has just been so helpful. And since like 2017, it's like you said, maybe I, especially in the beginning, I wasn't just opening my Bible and reading. It just was, it didn't come easy for me because it was sure. so different. Um, but I think going through, especially at Passion Creek, all of the different practices that we have um, and just guides that you give in order for us to structure what practice we're doing it is so helpful because mm. somebody like me who maybe i feel like i don't know exactly where to begin yeah i can open it and be like okay i'm gonna finish this practice and i'm gonna learn probably a ton of new things while i'm doing it you know so that even fast forward to today especially going through the scripture series it was okay you find what is it place pace oh. Yeah. What, what did more. I say? Plan. Plan. This was, uh, Caleb created that. You're talking about that workbook. Yes. It gave a yes. couple tips. This is um, all Pastor Caleb, but and yeah. And that was really helpful. I'm like, okay, mm. I know where I'm going to read. I know what time and I know kind of where I left off and I'm not going to let a time constraint. Yes. I'm not going to let that stop me from just going out and reading my Bible. I can read my Bible for five minutes, right. you know, and it's, it doesn't mean that I didn't get, I got less out of it 
than reading it for an hour, you know? Right. So it was just, okay, I'm waking up and I'm getting myself into a routine. Mm-hmm. I'm going and I'm reading and I'll pick it up the next day or, you know, whenever I fit it, whenever my schedule allows for it. But yeah. it's just, but you definitely want to be intentional with, okay, if I need to say, I like how you brought it up. If I need to say no to these things that really aren't important in order to get my time in, in the word and diving into scripture, then I've made that a priority, Yes, you know, and that's so important in learning new things. It's like, you need to be intentional with it. Yeah. So that's that's so helpful. I think it's, it's, it's really funny how our, our brains, I don't know if it's our, just every human in history does this, or maybe society has made this even harder, but for us, we, we think it's impossible because there's so many things we do in life and we think, well, I can't get rid of that. It's like, well, you probably could, you know, like you don't have to do all those other things. Like if you look at the average, I don't even know if we're the same generation, actually. I think you're technically Gen Z, huh? I think I am. I think I am. Yeah. Although you feel more like a millennial, but so I don't know if that's a compliment or not. (laughs) Gen Z gets better, better props. (laughs) Millennials have just always been trashed on. Um, It's this whole idea that there's no way I can just take something out in my life. But if you look at the typical millennial, like Mm -hmm. our time on our phone it's like up to seven hours a day right. so it's like you have the time mm-hmm. you just haven't you know created those avenues so yeah, yeah those those are really helpful another thing that we've been saying in the series was it's not about a reading plan as much as it is about a reading pace right yeah. so like you don't have to finish the whole plan in the right. the allotted time so that's mm-hmm. what you're saying right there's freedom i'm showing up right i'm reading the time that i have i'm fully engaged but i know for me sometimes if because i'm competitive you're competitive you yeah. grew up in sports mm-hmm. Right. So if you do have these tallies, you're like, I got to get it done. Yeah. Right. But it's not about the tallies. It's about the time, mm-hmm. you know. So sometimes staying in Colossians one for three days is way better than reading Philippians, Colossians, Ephesians, Galatians, all, right. in, you know, that span of time. Yeah, for sure. So was there anything else or do you want well, me to another question? Say another thing, too, just out of the scripture series that was really um, like I, it always stuck with me when I was going through and reading throughout the weeks that we were doing that series was um recognizing what type I don't know exactly what it was but it's like genre what genre yes what genre I'm reading it's like because then if I know that psalm is the book of psalms is poetry you know then Mm. I know what questions I need to be asking myself as I'm going through to help me better understand what they're actually talking about you know you can't just read it like on any other any other genre that's going to be very straightforward it's like you have to ask questions and be intentional with that in order to really get what you're supposed to be getting out of it. Right. You know? So for those who are at Passion Creek, we have those booklets still available online at formedbyjesus.com slash scripture or at the merch box, which we just got, which looks really cool. Mm-hmm. So that's such a great point. Like Proverbs, like a lot of people have experienced shame and condemnation because Proverbs, people read them as if they're promises. Do this and it'll always happen. Well, no, it's principles, right? right. So like uh, raise up the ch- your child in the way they should walk. And when they grow old, they won't depart from it. Well, that's really destroyed a lot of people because they think that's absolute, a promise, 100% accuracy. And then they 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 thought they did everything right. They're following the Lord. They brought their kid up in church. Their kid turns 22 and leaves the faith and it just shatters them, right? And so it's good to remember, okay, Proverbs aren't promises. Okay, Genesis isn't a science textbook. Mm-hmm. It's, you know, a different type of literary genre. That's yeah. a great point. Yeah, because it's so, I think those are the little things that keep people from reading the Bible yeah. All together, right? It's kind of scary. It's like, how do, yeah. where am I at? What am I doing? And I would say New Testament's a little easier than the old. Old is a lot of more different genres and, and yeah. it gets kind of confusing. But mm-hmm. yeah, it's good to know. Yeah, that, that should be really helpful. Another thing you mentioned on stage uh, on that Sunday was about Haggah, mm-hmm. which is the Hebrew word for eating the scriptures, right? So you see that in Joshua 1, Psalm 1, you see it all over the place, Revelation 10 about like indulge, like eating it, chewing it over with unhurried delight. How that's been, how has that been helpful to you? Yeah. Um, I think I remember the Sunday when we were teaching us on that and how we would just re we read, reread and reread that passage that we were going. And every time you read it, you were like, okay. And you would dive further and further into it. And that was something when I left, I was like, wow, I'm going to do that hmm. because you just, like I said, you're, as you're reading and as you're continuing to just meditate on that and recognize the patterns and the repetition and what that actually means, you're going to get something maybe completely different than what you would have gotten out of it if you only read it once and just kept moving on with your day. So that was something that was very huge for me in my practices today. It's like, okay, 
I need to not rush myself through this. Yeah. Doesn't matter what the time constraint is. I'm just going to read. And I know when you were teaching on that passage, just noticing certain things like the repetition, if things are being repeated more than once, then it's normally something that you need to hone into yeah. and recognize. And so that was huge when I would read it and I would notice, oh, they repeated this a couple times. Let me go back instead of continuing. Let me go back and read it through a few more times to see what more I can pull out of it. So that the example good. we were using was, I think that Sunday, I'm trying to think it through. I think that was the one um, that most people talk about. I think for some reason mm -hmm. that, that eat it message was like, okay, this is really helpful. Uh, I even love like Emily, she was been, cause the challenge a couple weeks ago was to meditate on second Timothy one seven mm -hmm. for the spirit. You know, God hasn't given us a spirit of fear, but a power, love and sound mind. And yeah. then you guys saying like a tag, like yeah. a bridge of that uh -huh. meditation last yeah. Sunday, which I thought was so cool. Yeah. But that one was, um, talks about, uh, the kingdom of God is like a man who finds a treasure hidden in a field and he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Mm -hmm. And so then we're like, okay, first glance, um, oh, okay, we need to give up everything for the sake of the kingdom, right? Like, what am I not willing to sell? And then you read it again and again, and it might even get you to think more and more like, oh, I need to give, you know, I, I just need to reprioritize my life. But then you read it several times, and then I noticed, oh, wait, yes, that has implications about us, but ultimately it's Jesus mm -hmm. who sold all that he had. He gave up his life to buy us back, right? That's the kingdom. It's the gospel, right? And that's just like, whoa, you would never catch that you just go through it quickly yeah exactly. right and then of course you consult commentaries or ask your pastor is this all right you know like i did yeah. i came up with the whole <laughs> is this new right way yeah this? sometimes yeah. that's okay to ask but the spirit of the lord you know gives us that wisdom and insight sure. that's really helpful is there any other things that have been helpful or even just advice you would give to somebody who kind of feels like in your position um i also think you know that you feel pressure because you you are a leader at our church so hopefully when people go to together groups they don't feel that pressure but i think that's real for everybody yeah. mm -hmm. you know um, but yeah, is there any advice as you've been engaging in the scriptures that's been, in, in, you know, helpful to you and maybe can be helpful to our listeners? Yeah. Um, well, I think one of the big things for me, especially was being more intentional with the together group, um, mm -hmm. just going and getting together with people and kind of getting back to what we were taught on Sunday. It brings out so much and you learn different perspectives from the different people that are there while growing closer to them. So that honestly being a part of the together group and being consistent with it was so helpful because then you learn like, Oh, well this worked out, this worked for me really well. And then you start, you know, trying out other things that your group was doing and it helps. It's really, really beneficial. That's but, a great point. We really want to be practitioners, right? Yeah. Where we're trying this thing out mm -hmm. and you can't try it alone. And so you're saying it's like, you're giving advice to each other and encouragement. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it's so I have found, cause we're, we do a lot. Like, you know, we focus on these practices. I have found the most success, that people, the people who are most successful, what I mean by that is just like trying it out yeah. as if they're in a together group because they have encouragement, they can press forward. This, this stuff's hard to do alone. Yeah. And I love that you mentioned that having that community, that encouragement sometimes yeah. just, I'm not the only one trying this, Right. you know, is really helpful. Right. Yeah. And just honestly, the Bible can be very intimidating. <laughs> and I know that firsthand, you know, being right when I started, it's like, whoa, I don't even know where to start in this. So I think just not putting a lot of pressure on yourself that you need to come out with it with some life changing news, you know, or, or ways to that you need to drastically change your life. And I'm sure, you know, some people do that, but a lot of times you're going to open your Bible and you're going to read and, um, there might not be something that really sticks out to you, but the point is, is that you're spending time with the Lord yeah. and you're being intentional about it. But at the end of the day, God knows what your intentions are. And he knows that you're diving in to learn more about him and to hopefully start leading your life into a way that, um, you know, imitates the way that he lived and the way that Jesus lived here. So. Yeah, that's good. I, you know, I never point to a single meal and go, because of that meal, I'm alive. Although right. it's true, mm -hmm. right? We just, we just eat and we still survive. Yeah. And I think with, uh, with scripture reading and also Sunday gatherings, we want it to be the best meal ever. And now I can, you know, go off for a week without food. It's like, it's just that slow, steady drip. That's what feeds us, sustains us. And that's what you're saying, right? Like, it's not going to be, that's been a consistent theme in everybody we've been interviewing. Mm -hmm. 
lay off the pressure, right? It's not good. Some days, and you'll be surprised, right? Some days it was profound. Like this, this was life changing and other days it's not at all. So thank you so much, Lexi, for taking time to do this. I know you drove really far to come out here for this interview. <laughs> uh, you, you seriously, you embody so much of the, our culture that we want at our church. You're such a great leader. Uh, we talk a lot about how we want leaders who never stop learning. You do the, I mean, that's been evident in this conversation. Never compare. I think you're really confident in who you are and who you're not. I think it's really rare for somebody your age and stage of life. I think that's pretty incredible. You never give up, right? You have stuck with us through all the twists and turns of our church. You never dishonor. I have never heard you say an ill word about anybody. I don't know if you say it about me behind my back. I'm just kidding. (laughs) No, No, like you're just an honorable person. Like you just want to honor people in the room and and you see the best in people. And I appreciate that. And then never alone. I love that you're in together group. I love that you feed, uh, you lead our worship team so well and with so much grace and so again you just embody who who we want to continue to produce at our church so we're grateful for you thank you yeah make sure you guys comment your biggest takeaways from this video and we'll see you again soon